Welcome to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. And I was thinking, Arif, about uh, a recent show we did, and we were talking about just some of the changes in product that are coming about uh, and being demanded in residential real estate. And you hit on something I thought was interesting. You talked about us seeing a more of an amalgamation of the retail component of real estate and residential, multi-residential uh, um, one area in particular you were, you were talking about was along Bayfield Street. Tell us, bring us up again on what you were talking about there and what you meant. Well, Mike, it's, it's funny. Yes, certainly it's glad to still have this platform to be able to do some research and think things through. Uh, and, and I will tell you, if there's one thing that I think we've all begun to figure out is that nobody's coming up with necessarily anything that's an earth shattering concept or an idea, but certainly things that might have been on the sidelines or on the shelf even uh, up until 2020 are certainly now catalyzed into the forefront. And we're going to start seeing some of these uh, shifts where these ideas take yeah. shape. So uh, in the last uh, season or th throughout the duration of the last season of our show, we've had some incredible uh, experts and, and industry uh, savants uh, join us, people like Nick Nanos, certainly the mayor of Barrie, and uh, the uh, uh, team from the Ontario Real Estate Association, Sean and Tim, and, and they've all brought these ideas forward in terms of their tracking habits, their tracking trends. But they're, they, while they may not have landed on an absolute consensus, one thing's for sure, we know that city planners are forced to have a second look at sort of the status quo, how, how we've always mm -hmm. done things, because that, yeah. that potentially finely tuned system of, seeing things go through has been has certainly uh, been shaken up, right? And, and so yep. really where this is coming from is the fact that we know that uh, commercial landlords and also corporate head offices down in the GTA are seeing more vacancy than previous. Uh, we're seeing more yep. people working from home. And so if that's happening, then therefore what's happening on the other side of the equation? Well, we see more people working from home. We see people working closer to home Therefore, uh, since there's less of a shift of vacuum down into GTA, then what are the, I don't want to call them bedroom communities because that would really irk some people up and bury. We're not a bedroom community, but what would the people who used to commute do with their daily lives, their work life balance uh, at home if they're able to work closer to home? And so really um, uh, Bayfield Street, as, as I think you mentioned uh, offline, Mike, really is an example of poor planning or how not to plan a, a city. Well, 20th century planning, in... 70s and 80s planning for sure, where we had less regard for land because there was just so much of it still to uh, undevelop. Right, e exactly. So so that's been sitting stagnant. Um, certainly if, there, if we saw a vacuum of demand or if there was a great new concept or an idea, I'm sure we would have seen shovels in the ground previously. Uh, but yeah. now I think we're going to really see that. And we're seeing the reason why I predict that, no, mm -hmm. no crystal ball, uh, is, is that we're seeing it in other jurisdictions. We're seeing it in other municipalities. People are saying the death of the re of retail as we know it or the death of the mall. We certainly saw a record number of closures of retail. And the question yeah. is, are we going to allow that to happen as a society? Is, is that going to happen? My answer is I doubt it, but I think we're going to see a shift. And that yeah. shift is that if we can create the community, if we can create the audience, and if we can create the customer, then I think we're going to see that. And we will see that by redesigning and reimagining retail as sort of uh, uh, residential over retail. Yeah. And Bayfield's a perfect location for that. Yeah. And, it, and if I may, you, you look in Barry, we have the Bayfield Mall, the Kozlov Center. We've got a lot of strip malls, which have large parking lots as, as a part of those projects. Uh, more often than not, they're less than 10% uh, capacity of cars in these malls. And our shopping habits have changed. And, and what's typically the catalyst for change in real estate development is uh, reaching certain price points for the highest and best use changes. And having acres and acres of parking, uh, maybe in 1975, seemed okay. Uh, today, uh, with the demands for, for uh, housing as population climbs, that's not okay. So we will likely see that development closer to the street along Bayfield Street. 
uh, with the residential component uh, above the retail component. The lands in behind will be repurposed as well. And this I can see happening again and again along Bradford Street, which is yes, yet to be redeveloped and repurposed. Uh, Essa Road uh, going from Lakeshore on up to Highway 11 may see a lot of that same type of uh, development. But at the same time, I think there, and we touched on this as well in a previous show, um, we're seeing not so necessarily a shift away, but a, an inclusion of the the uh, old traditional larger single family home development again. We've kind of shifted towards the um, condominium and smaller development in the big rural center or big urban centers. Um, now with COVID, uh, we are seeing people are having a little bit of a, a yearning for, for bigger properties and bigger lots. And that's going to take us or uh, create demands beyond urban centers and that. And when we come back from so, the break, Mike, what I would, um, <laughs> I'm not going to throw the break just yet, Mike, but, but what I was going to say is I, I agree with much of what you're saying. And I think that, mm -hmm. um, I think that we will definitely see, and we are seeing that yearning. I think, again, nothing works in isolation. We're seeing people who are saying, hey, you know what, if I don't need to be down in the GTA where I can't afford a home and maybe yeah. where I'm renting or maybe the home that I'm owning doesn't have a, a front door or a back door or a backyard and, and I'm living in multi-unit uh, accommodations, um, maybe if I travel outside the GTA, I can find that. So I definitely think we are going to see pressure to see more yeah. Um, either towns or single detached homes. I agree with you. But here's the yeah. other thing I think that doesn't work, where, where we're not in isolation. You're right, we're, we're going to have to go to break shortly. But here's the thing technology does play a part. So nothing working in isolation means that, well, if you look down at uh, Markham or, or York Region in, in general, certainly in Ottawa as well, you're seeing mass transit being prioritized. So I think Bayfield will become mm -hmm. a corridor. For more mass transit and i think you will see that technology has played a part in this yeah. decision making um uh, we will see less people uh as you said less cars in the parking lot but technology in terms of the retail transaction is certainly having an impact so we'll still see residential over yeah. retail we'll still see people doing a transaction online but you know, how this is going to morph into some sort of a hybrid system, I'm not sure. we got to go to break. Hold that thought and let's talk technology when we come back for the break. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. On the Midhurst Studio Tour, it's just such a great way to, you know, meet the people in your area. In Simcoe County, there's not a, a street or a stream or a park that you cannot find inspiration. And it's nice to use stuff that's found that you can incorporate into your repertoire. And if I can't carve it, then we do a CAD design through the computer, and then um, we will cast it and then add the stones. That's what I love. I, I love doing really different things. the people there to support you that you know you should. Your world kind of like spirals. But United Way has been the biggest change coming into high school. Having the ability to help kids succeed is so important. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Araf. And we're talking about game changers in real estate and how the product is going to change one of the things that I'm seeing in the future that is going to change is something new. Uh, two of the richest men in the world here right now are Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has totally changed how we shop. Elon Musk has introduced something other than the Tesla car and SpaceX, SpaceX and taking us to Mars. 
Um, he has created something called Starlink, which is a network of satellites, which is going to allow for broadband high-speed internet pretty much anywhere on the planet. Right now, if you want to work from home, which more and more of us are doing, uh, you're pretty much limited to living within a major urban center where that high-speed fiber optics line is available. So more rural communities going north from Barrie are pretty much, uh, you're off the grid if you're up there. So working from home, if that's going to be a, a component of uh, the workforce in the future in a growing way, then you're going to need access to that high-speed internet. And if there's a satellite service that, you know, if you're living in Kenora or Toronto, it won't matter. You're going to be able to do those Zoom conferences that need that high-speed internet, uh, exchange those large files, network with everyone else. So this is opening up a realm of possibilities for uh, where people can live going forward. Uh, can, can you see how this really is a game changer or a fire? Absolutely. And Mike, and, and particularly here in Simcoe County, this has been a, a, a conversation for some time. Now, here's the thing. None of this is earth shattering. None of this is a surprise. No, it was inevitable. And if there was anybody that I would put my money on, it's going to be Elon Musk, the guy who everybody yeah. said no to. He's going to be the guy that delivers. But here's why. His head is 40 if years into where the we are today with the World Wide Web. It, it, exactly. And, and he's, but he, the thing is, he's an overnight success decades in the making, right? And, yeah. and, and if you look at the World Wide Web, and if you look at the founding of the World Wide Web and the founding of GPS, it was all based around government. It was based around military requirements. Uh, it was based around safeguarding national security. And uh, so if you look at things like the web, goes back to the military. GPS goes back to the military. Satellite access for communications goes back to the yep. military satellite phones. While people have cell phones, the military and ambassadors and top intelligence agencies were utilizing yep. satellite NASA phones. NASA is another That's big so that uh, they could element of that too. Absolutely. So this is no big yep. surprise. It's big for us. Now, here's the thing. Elon Musk, uh, about two months ago, I'm guessing, sometime in the last quarter of 2020, was very clear to say, I'm bringing you Starlink now. Here's the thing. It's going to cost you a little bit extra money, and it's going to be pretty at lousy first. quality at first. If you yeah. go back to the first generation of an iPhone or the first generation of, of an Android, they were pretty fascinating back then. But if you were to take your phone today and go back to your first generation device, it would be pretty lousy. But yeah. in such I would a argue short that period of time, I, yeah. it's been headed. Yeah, I'd, I'd argue against that, though, because I think the hardware technology is there today that this will be fast out of the box right now. And and Elon Musk certainly sets his standards high enough that I don't think he'd release a program a program uh, or product that didn't meet a certain standard. I think you might have challenges with, with the outages and that in the beginning, but I think in terms of the speed, whatever is offered will will be deliverable. And I mean, right I now, see, you know, across Canada, sorry, I just got to make this point is, uh, more than 60% of Canadians don't have access to broadband internet. And one area where that's predominant is in our uh, First Nations communities in the North, they don't have access to broadband. Um, this is gonna bring them into the fold. It's gonna provide uh, improvements to for uh, remote uh, medicine. And uh, it's also gonna provide education opportunities remotely that is gonna interconnect the whole planet. And where being remote was was a great disadvantage um, in past. It, it's going to level that playing field. It'll take some time for that to to, to show itself uh, the results of that. But I I think it's it's a great thing for our our country as a whole. Well, I, I would I would suggest to you that um, it like I said it it has been on the docket uh, certainly at the county of Simcoe for. Uh, several years, mm -hmm. probably five or six years at this point, at least. Um, and, and the technology that they were looking at deploying and, and uh, actually uh, paying for uh, to bring this to the public um, yeah. is not Starlink. It's, it's more of a satellite, uh, sort of like your bell dish, I would have to presume. Yeah. I, I don't know the, the absolute specifics on it, but I certainly think that speaking of game changers, uh, Elon Musk's uh, uh, um, 
technology will create competition. Yeah. It, well, yeah. It will create, and and, uh, and the difference being, and it certainly will make it viable. Yeah. And the difference being, in, in the technology you, you were talking about, uh, where existing satellite services where they were utilizing for that, and they're further out uh, from the Earth, and there's lag. And you can't have lag. That would mean, as we're talking here, my voice and my video is not syncing up. And uh, what this Starlink satellite network is, it's literally only about two kilometers out into space. It's close by. Um, they're within a few kilometers of one, an hour, one another and interlinked. So that lag is eliminated. Um, and this is the first set of satellites that does that. But there are other players that will be coming into it. Amazon is talking about getting involved with this. Uh, Telelink is another company. And you can bet uh, the four major players, uh, Shaw, McLean's, Rogers, and Bell in Canada, will all either piggyback onto their hardware with their own uh, uh, services or, or set up their own entirely different networks and that. So I think going forward, this, is, this will be the norm. And with competition will come affordability built into that. And I think in the in the interim, uh, I'd be surprised if our federal government did not get involved, at least where First Nations communities are involved, to try and offset some of the initial costs of getting this set up. But again, this is, you know, stepping into a whole new realm for, for technology and information, which is going to take those limits for many. Like I move a lot of people into rural communities as a realtor, and that's their big sacrifices. They're either giving up uh, cell phone availability or quality, and they're certainly giving up uh, high-speed internet access. And if you can have both well, those I things back. Well, I think, Mike, you're, we're going to see that, uh, uh, that the other players will come on, and there will be basically resellers of... Uh, this product, those who will buy it and walk and resell it to their local community. But we got to go to break. And when we come back, though, Mike, let's talk about how now we've got the two segments of the show. We've got a changing landscape. We've got technology. How's that going to come together and impact locally uh, in Barrie, in Simcoe County? And how is the home going to change? And by the way, let's talk pickup trucks for a second when we come back from this break on Hitting Home with Mike and Arn. It's so inspiring to know that there's people out there that are willing to help people who've gone the situation that I've gone through. Because of United Way, I'm able to stand in front of you today with a good job that I can actually make something of myself. Hey, did you know? More than 4,500 Canadians are waiting for an organ transplant right now. Right now. 4,500. People are dying. And you could save a life. 90% of Canadians say they're willing to donate their organs. But only a few are registered. So what are you waiting for? Get registered. It's easy and it's free. Leave a legacy. Be a hero. Save, save a life. life. Find out how to register today. Go to kidney.ca. My wife, I want her to learn from you. Beautiful. It pleases me you've struck up a friendship together. I don't want to go back to the life I had before you. Did you do it? I didn't do this. No one's gonna believe you. I made one small mistake. I need to call me when you're ready. What makes you think I'm gonna go along with this? Because it's your own way out. You sure about that? Growing up, I just felt this hatred for myself and I stopped planning for the future because I didn't think I had one. Without United Way and the generosity of the whole organization, I don't even really know where I'd be. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RF. And Mike, you know, um, as, as we've been talking about throughout the, the, the past two segments, we're seeing this sort of mix and merge between supply, demand, and, and changes in technology and how technology and the market is meeting those demands. And it, and it brings me back to the story. And I, I touched on the idea of a pickup truck. But if you look back in the 60s and 70s, uh, we, we probably had uh, mostly uh, single income families and therefore the requirement for the utility of a single vehicle. And Mike, probably in real estate, correct me if I'm wrong, we probably had homes that had single car garages. Yeah, and then they're as still we went, out there in those old communities, yep. Certainly, uh, certainly one of my first homes, single car garage. And, and as we 
grow and as our needs and demands and market demands change and pressures change, we certainly went into families that had dual income families and therefore the need for more than one vehicle. And uh, probably the houses changed to dual car garages. And so we typically would have the family sedan and maybe the utility vehicle. Certainly if the family of one member was uh, in the trades, for example, there would be a pickup truck in the driveway. Yeah. Um, but now it's as a status we, symbol, if it's not a practical uh, need anyways, the pickup truck nowadays. Absolutely. And that's just it, Mike. Now, certainly we've seen pressures where, you know, income, people will argue that our income hasn't kept up. Certainly, uh, if you think that every 10 years, the price of things double, I don't think everybody's income has doubled in 10 years. So we're now seeing once again, certainly of the last 10 years, a trend towards perhaps uh, one vehicle in the driveway or lesser vehicles in the driveway, but that vehicle, mm -hmm. that utility vehicle has now become a status symbol as you talk about and certainly become fully appointed with technology and luxury. It's become uh, yeah. leather with an infotainment system and, and pickup trucks are expensive oh. and, and, and they're luxury vehicles. <clears throat> yeah, and the old Ford pickup with the bench seat and the, the AM radio uh, and the CB. Uh, that's gone. They're, they are, they're Cadillacs now. No, they, and, and literally, literally, they are Escalades and they're Lincoln Navigators yeah. and they're all, all, all sorts of Denali's and, and things like that. So, so why, why is that relevant? Well, if we look at what's happening, Mike, and, and what we've talked about on the show, we, we see that, um, and I certainly think that we can agree that there have been many ideas that have been sitting in sort of the wings waiting to take shape and we're not sure when they're going to come or how they're going to come. And then you see yeah. a catalyst like we've seen in the year 2020 that certainly, as you refer to, is the game changer. And how did that happen? How did that roll itself out? Well, it changed where we live. It changed how we live. It changed how we access goods and services it changed how we work and so what's going to happen when you take this blend of the things that we've talked about with people migrating maybe choosing not to live down the gta choosing places that have recreation in our backyard like the mountains and like the lake and the trails and, and the mountain biking uh access to nature uh the backyard mm -hmm. that we've talked about throughout this show and blend that with technology blend that with starlink blend that with mass transit blend that with the likelihood that we will see see a reshaping of the downtown as we know it and certainly as major corridors through mass transit and retail, uh, residential retail what's going to happen though mike in this area in barry and simcoe county what type of home are people going to use i'm seeing in finance and i'm seeing in applications more and more people are thinking that cottage that i used to only get to spend the odd weekend at in the summer or a few weekends over the year I now want to turn that into my four season home. I want to turn that yeah. into my daily home and I'm going to willing to telecommute or work remotely and, and make this my home and raise my yeah. family here. I, I literally have a client I'm working with right now <clears throat> who purchased a home uh, in Clearview Township. The owners of that home, and it's a beautiful home. Um, I ask, why are you selling? Uh, they have a cottage in Kenora and that's going to be their full-time home. And, and he's in the technology industry as well. And, and this is what kind of spurned the, today's subject, because he says, I'm going to be able to work from uh, the cottage now with high-speed internet. He is already connected as one of the beta testers for Starlink. So that was what got my wheel spinning on this show. And I thought, well, if he's doing it, this is going to become the norm. And more and more people are going to be leaving the city. And Again, you're talking about changes that are dictated by affordability uh, with people. And yes, with two cars, uh, with the kids in this sport and that lesson and everything else, there are costs of living uh, are, are going up faster than our incomes are. So we're looking for efficiencies elsewhere. And moving to a rural location is probably one of the biggest uh, uh, opportunities to save on your month to month. And again, Having uh, being able to take that high speed internet and all those amenities with you to the rural uh, property is is that game changer. And I think we're going to see developers uh, tapping into this, too, and buying up some of that rural land that is fairly inexpensive because it was unserviceable uh, prior to now. And, you know, now that it will be, you know, virtually on the grid instead of off the grid. 
uh, it's it's now there uh, to to build on. We be it an independent URI wants to build our single home, and or convert the cottage to full time year round, and then the developers who are are, are going to be cherry picking some of that property in the early uh, years yeah. going forward. Mike, I, I would argue that uh, th this isn't going to go without a, a challenge, and the challenge is going to be yeah. that municipality. Well, certainly for the last thirty years, uh, there have been those uh, who have been pushing the idea of higher density is the, is the more intelligent, more economically viable way of doing things. We already proved many decades that you can't just have pockets wherever you want because no. it's impossible to afford to run the services there. So this is there is going to be again some pressure on that. We yeah. don't have a lot of time, but one of the things I would tell you is that it certainly is viable to slightly adjust your home base footprint to account for a home office. The Revenue, Revenue Canada, and I'm imagining in the States, the IRS is doing something similar, is applying or allowing for tax credits if you have to work from yeah. home. Um, mm -hmm. so, so there's been the environmental push. There's been the financial shift uh, towards uh, high density. There still is affordability, which Nick Nanos talks about. We're not going to get away from what people can and can't Forward. But no. again, we're going to see this shake out. I don't exactly know what it's going to look like, but I'm, I'm willing to bet that if employers are willing to get away from uh, some of their lease obligations and their overhead, if Revenue Canada is in on it, if technology uh, partners and influencers are in on it, you better believe that there is going to be a shift in the next five years. Yeah, for sure. Why don't you wrap us up? 30 yeah. seconds to you, Mike. How do you, how do you, I, this I, look, I look forward to that shift. Up? Yeah, I look forward to that shift. I think it uh, opens up a world of opportunities. And you know what? It'll have to be done in a balanced way. And of course, we do have uh, stop checks in place there for you know protecting our environment and every, everything else on rural uh, areas. But I think our dependence on the city uh, is shifting and changing. And I think our, our living needs and demands are going to shift right along with it. So I look uh -huh. forward to that. And Perfect. I'm going to throw I'm going to throw my industry under the bus, and I would say to you that as usual, they're the last to get on board. The financial industry is going to have to yeah. shift the way they do risk assessment and and underwriting because they have been oh, reluctant sure. to do this. We got to go, Mike, but I can't wait to see mm -hmm. what we talk about next on Hitting Home. So join us again. Thanks for being with us today on Hitting Home with Mike and RF. Mm -hmm.